Welcome back to DWeb Decoded, a podcast by Filecoin Foundation that explores the intersection of blockchain and the data economy. Today, we're joined by Vera Wu of Numbers Protocol to talk about blockchain as a content authentication tool. Vera, it's great to have you on the show. Hi, Aaron, and thanks all for having us on the show. It's a very exciting opportunity that we can you know, share what we are doing with the public. Amazing. Yeah, so uh, excited to get into this here. Um, but to get started, why don't you tell us a bit more about yourself and kind of your journey into crypto, and then uh, we'll talk a bit more about Numbers Protocol. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for asking. Well, my background is quite different from others because I actually from finance background. I'm an accountant back in the day and working in the big four for several years. But I find out that I'm really enjoying the like startup ecosystem and I really impressed by blockchain technology. I want to learn more. So that's why how I met my founder and joined the team numbers protocol and also join this like huge ecosystem like i have to learn uh, new things every day in this like super like quick password but quite enjoy that yeah that's that's kind of the fun part about uh working in the blockchain world right there's always something new you have to react to and yeah. learn every day um yeah uh so you're, you're an accountant that's really interesting i've uh that, that's that's that I, I wouldn't have expected that but that's a that's a very interesting like pathway into into what you're doing now um but i guess it, it's numbers protocol and you're 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 used to working with numbers so maybe it's appropriate so tell us more about numbers um like like how do you guys get started what are you trying to do um and uh we'll dive into some more of the kind of the the, the examples and so, things later but tell us give us the overview of what you guys are doing yeah, Numbers founded back in 2019 when we uh, re- realized that the misinformation or disinformation issue is quite serious on the internet. Not to mention, like I would say the problem is more serious compared to the 2019 because of the rise of uh, Gen AI tool or like the de- evolving of the new technology. So Numbers Protocol utilized blockchain and AI to build a trustworthy digital media environment. Uh, it serves as a one-click button for everyone to verify and check the source of the digital media on the internet. Currently, right now, people is starting start to like concern what I see every day or I consume every day. Is that the real like moment or is that generated content? And I don't know how to believe that you know seeing is no longer believing right now because we all have the ability to modify content, generate like fat content, trying to manipulate or trying to influence people's opinion. So our vision is that for content you care about, there is always a numbers button for you to verify its source like very easily. So that will empower us to make informed decision and trust what we see and read on the internet again. So that's quite like a short intro of what we are doing and our vision. Talk a bit about uh, the role of AI here with regards to the question of misinformation. And I think there's there's both a positive and a negative, right? The, the, the negative is obviously that it's easier to create just fake content that could be used maliciously or deceptively. Uh, the positive would be that it's easier to uh, identify when, when people are using or creating fake content or, or distributing fake content. So maybe talk a bit about like this double-edged sword that that AI presents right now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, like for every technology that has like upside, but also have the downside. So AI, definitely it is. So for me, like on the positive side, it can be used to detect copyright infringement and label AI generated content easily. So for example, we also use AI to, uh, in our backend, trying to use the AI engine to enhance the reliabilities and occurrences of the information we provide. So the AI engine works by comparing like new content against a blockchain secure database of verified information. So this not only speed up the process of, of verification, but also significantly reduce the chance of misinformation spreading. And uh, I also talk with a lot of uh, media folks. They also agree that AI is a superpower tool for them. So they can do the research more quickly to collect uh, information or check back in a flash and uh, let them you know, get their story straight. Uh, but on other sides, 
AI also powers the creation of defect, as you just mentioned, and the contributing to the spread of misinformation. So how to balance, you know, this AI superpower is quite crucial and important in this digital media world and how we could in- deploy that in more ethical way. That's my opinion. Got it, got it. Um, and then talk about uh, talk about the role of, of of blockchain here in in your solution. Like how does how like why does a solution that you guys that this the solution that you've developed of verifying digital content like why does this require blockchain? Like what's the value that that blockchain adds here? Uh, what are the advantages? Yeah, yeah. So to me, blockchain is uh, very essential if we want AI to deploy on the right track. Uh, even a couple of days ago, I just uh, saw a piece of uh, United States government uh, report. They also mentioned that, you know, like action to manage the risk of IP and the data integrity AI should include blockchain. So when we talk about like trust issue, I like I believe like only decentralization and the transparency can build trust, the true trust. So image that. The Donald Trump campaign shares a video of Biden and the claims there is no AI modification. Will you trust that? You know, I bet not unless you can truly verify its source with decentralized transaction. So this is the key difference between numbers protocol and other digital content verification solutions. Decentralization, transparent, and backed by the tamper-proof records. So when you click the information button provided by Meta on social media, Social uh, Meta also provides some performance information. So what do you see are records in Meta's centralized database? Meta owns the record, not the content. Isn't that very real? Because I believe it should be the content owner to declare the source of the content, not Meta. So that's why we need to make a difference. So unlike the traditional centralized database, where verification and the control are handled by a single partner, Blockchain transactions are uh, dis, uh, dis, uh, dis, sorry, decentralized and transparent. So when you click the button powered by numbers, you see the records on blockchain, not either in my database. It's already on blockchain and we cannot alter that at all. So the content owner declares the source where they register the content to the blockchain. This means no single point of value or no single source of control significantly uh, increasing data security and the reliability. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, right? If you're, uh, you know, if, if you're verifying the content using just a, a single like verifier, like you basically just have to trust that that verifier, you know, whoever's yeah. owning that database, like you're, you have to trust that 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 entity is going to be doing this truthfully and and, and honestly. And you don't yeah. necessarily have the transparency and like, what are their motives? Like, what's what's their approach? What's their how like how are they labeling? You know, misinformation versus correct information. Like, y- y- these are things that that you wouldn't necessarily know as as an outsider. Um, so that makes a lot of sense. Um, so you've worked on on some election integrity uh, kind of issues in the U.S. and Taiwan and India and some other places. Uh, maybe just talk, walk us through like how you and how, how Numbers Protocol is uh, engaging in some of these these uh, situations. Yeah, so um, yeah, we are, I'm very uh, we actually very exciting for this year because this year is a super election year 2024. So, but we also know that you know inf- uh, a lot of people are trying to use fake news or fake information to influence people's opinion, even for the election result. So we kind of uh, have this initiative first in Taiwan, helping uh, helping Taiwan uh, media and uh, uh, journalists to build more trustworthy information to the public. So as I mentioned, that we want to let the public and audience, the readers, to verify the source very easily, just with one click. But before we can provide the information with the audience. There's uh, like three phases behind the scenes. So the first is capture phase, and the second will be selling, and the third will be verification phases. So for the uh, first two one capture phase is when the content was, and that is for the content registration phase. So our uh, technology help the content creators, whether it is, it is underground journalist or digital media producer or the digital media partners, they could secure 
all generated content with unique signature. So as soon as the content is produced, it's time stamp and the register on our blockchain, preserving the original information and its context. So we have diverse tools, including the mobile app and the desktop version, and also the API to assist journalists and the media outlet in completing the uh, goal very easy. So they could manage their problems very easily. So then we move to the sealing process. So all the sign and the registered content is securely sealed and stored using decentralized a storage technology. So thanks for the uh, IPFS and Product Lab. So we can ensure that it remains accessible and unaltered for the long term. So this selling process not only protects the integrity of media, but also serves as a reliable record for future reference. So by the, uh, storing it on decentralized uh, network, we safeguard against potential risk of a censorship or data loss. I would say that is quite important in this democracy world, you know, because, you know, when it comes to the political issue question, usually censorship is a huge, you know, risk to our democracy in this society. So we selling that on decentralized network, we can ensure that historic record is preserved intact for future reference. So then we have got all the provenance and we got, you know, pr uh, we seal the information and the content in a safe place. So then we go to the verification phases. So when people I want to check the information, so a uh, user can now verify content with very easy uh, tool. So image are uh, shared across the social media. They are often cropped or compressed or modified. So numbers verify engine are using AI to compare the input against existing database. I, just I mentioned the uh, uh, blockchain secure database. So highlighting the match content to the audience, to the reader. So by clicking the match content or any similar ones found in the database, the verify engine will navigate you to the profile page of the content, which displays its full history, including who's the con uh, content owner or who's the creators, the time, geolocation, timestamp, all this information that helping you to gather all the story behind the scene and make on your like, kind of informed decision. So the verification process is akin to a digital fingerprint, ensuring your content's uniqueness and the legitimacy. So the whole is a three-stage process, capture, seal, and verify. Ensure that every piece of the content handled by numbers protocol maintain its integrity from creation to consumption. So we providing tool not only to the news uh, media partners, but also to the public that they could verify digital content easily. So that's how we strengthen trust in new media and help up uphold the democratic process during elections. Got it, got it. So could you talk a bit more about some of the collaborations? Uh, and I'm interested in like, who's actually using this. I know like, you know, local journalists or kind of civil society groups or uh, even just kind of independent people that are photojournalists or, or, you know, Twitter journalists, I guess. Um, talk a bit about some of these uh, like collaborations, um, like what, what has been like fruitful, what has been what encouraging, what has been some success stories perhaps? Yeah. So uh, as I mentioned, that uh, we partner with uh, news media, uh, so I can just take like India election for example. India is a area that has been impacted by misinformation largely. That's because the the public in India usually rely on social media's information and a lot of like uh, political like parties trying to use some fake news to against their you know their opponents. So uh, we have a community team in India. He shared that it's quite serious problem. And even for his parents also share some, you know, fake news with him, but their parents believe that is fact-checking uh, news. So this is quite a serious issue. So we, that's why we also launched an election campaign initiative in India to address this uh, challenge directly. So we partner with the local news media outlets. So we provide a system where all content is verified and provenance. This means that the original source of every piece of news 
image or video can be verified with one click, offering the transparency and accountability. That's quite important. So instead of like getting lost in the chaos of, of unverified news on social media, people can access a trust platform where all content is verified. So you just instead of like getting lost in the internet, it definitely no there's a, a verified content that you can trust from news media saying, you know, they will dis, uh, disclose that who take this photo and at, least, uh, at what kind of moment. So at least, you know, they kind of dis- uh, disclose that and you can have more trust with them. So that's how I think this shifts the narrative from confusion and skepticism to one of informed understanding and trust. And also, you just mentioned that, like, our tool, how could use in maybe for the civic participant as well. So we also see that in our Taiwan election uh, campaign, the we have very easy use the mobile app. So for the underground journalist or even you are a citizen, you want to record the democracy moment, it's very easy. You can just use the camera, uh, capture can and the tech photo or tech video to document everything. So we can ensure there's no AI involvement or there's no retouch to the photo because once you take that, we check that like, you know, in the very beginning and we hash that on blockchain. So it also provides very kind of meaningful and uh, a community-based like, content to to this like a uh, democratic moment. So that is another way, uh, you know, how we enhance the trust in the social society and the, to enhance the democracy in Taiwan as well. Got it. So um, just a quick question here on like, how, how would this say, for instance, I'm, I'm a, a local journalist and I'm trying to capture some, some news events uh, in some capacity. So just, um, you've, you've kind of explained this before, but I just want to kind of repeat, make sure I'm understanding it. Uh, so I have the, the capture cam app on my phone and I can either use that to like take a picture or I can record a video yeah. of some sort. Yeah. And then, you know, and then basically, you know, once I'm finished, you know, creating that content, I, uh, I click the button and it, it like, like, I guess what all is being uh, of that information is being, uh, kind of like hashed and, 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 and stored essentially, or authenticated. Yes. Is it is it like like the the time and the date, the geographic location of, of where I was at the point in time? Uh, like what like what all is being actually uh, uh, like captured there? Yeah, just as you mentioned, the time, geolocation, and uh, I mean that is the the most important thing. At least you prove that you at that scene at at that moment, so that we can ensure the authenticity of that real moment so that's for the capture kit if you just uh, like on the ground but definitely we know for the organization for example our news media partners they have like thousands of image or digital content have to process so we also provide other easy management tool the desktop version so they could manage like upload all the information and uh, in our system we will kind of extract the metadata in the photo so we can like uh, auto populated all this information and hash on blockchain or you can manage that by yourself as well because uh, you might have additional information you want to provide maybe you have to some comments on the digital content and you can do that in, when you uh, manage all the information and then we help you to hash on blockchain so either way got it got it um and then maybe switching gears slightly here, um, does this system allow for like content creators, uh, whether they be photojournalists or whomever, to like monetize, to like license and monetize their work in some capacity? Is that is that something you have in the roadmap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad you asked. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> not only in our roadmap; it's already like a function and fixture. Oh, so great. we provide. Yeah, we provide. We also want to try to help. You know. Problem is it's very good, but it doesn't really help uh, journalists or creators to earn money, <laughs> I would say. Uh, so we provide, uh, you know, uh, the license, uh, you know, feature in our tool. So as I mentioned, people will click 
the provenance information on the digital content, so they will they could verify the source very easily. So once the authenticity is verified, the audience then can choose to donate or license or buy the verified content directly on the asset page. So this integration not only supports creators financially, but also builds trust with the audience by maintaining the integrity and the performance of their work. So uh, I just uh, I mentioned like we have several tools. Like part of tool is helping like content contributor or content owner to manage the performance. So we also have the display tool for audience, like the one click button, as I mentioned a lot of time for the audience or the public to verify the source. So on that one-click button, you can also see license option there if the creators open that. Then you can they can directly buy the license of your content or they could just donate and show their support to their favorite creators or favorite like journalists. So that could in, uh, kind of trying to help them to open the monetization way for their like media news media in the past we usually see that people was kind of uh they have to either like work with the getting image or work with some like news media and the license in a bench but i think there's more like flexible way in crypto world that you can license that very easily with smart contract and just one click you can license that part you don't have to go through that you know had cat like paperwork and all this kind of things. Yeah, I know that that makes a lot of sense, right? And I think that's the thing is like making it making it easy, making it making yeah. it simple, making in an yeah like giving you have to create the incentive for people to participate in this otherwise uh yeah people like <laughs> journalists are not the you know the, the highest paid profession out there so they, they need to have some sort of monetary incentive to participate. Um yeah. And um so as I understand uh, there's been over like a hundred thousand digital content pieces uh, that have been stored or you know authenticated via the numbers protocol, um, you know since you you've launched, and you know are there any kind of like um, how do you say this? Uh, are there any you know really success stories or, or or instances of like wow like we we were able to you know, thwart some sort of misinformation campaign because we had this content verified or, or, is, or is there any kind of success stories that, that, that you'd want to mention, uh, of now that you've, you've got this critical mass of pieces of content that have actually been stored on the protocol now or authenticated via the protocol, I should say. Yeah, I would say, I mean, 100K is first, uh, still a, a, a small number compared to the digital content right, yeah, that's, that's, right now. Yeah, that is true. But yeah, I think that, that is, is uh, important. Yeah. So I think that's, but still, that's an important start for us. And every day we see more content uploaded to Numbers Blockchain, demonstrating the strong need for users to preserve the source and protect the ownership of their content. Uh, I think that is just the beginning, but I still see some exciting sites. For example, we have a project trying to archive uh, Taiwan's protest uh, history moment that is back in 10 years ago, and we kind of collect like one around like one to two K digital content, like taken by the photojournalist through that protest. And that is a sound for protest. That is quite important protest in Taiwan's democracy history. And uh, I think that is also a very good like digital archive that we can ensure we kind of enhance the censorship, like kind of enhance the uh, digital resistance, especially in Taiwan's political environment, we are kind of influenced by the tension between Taiwan and China. So I believe that preserve, preserve of that kind of uh, material is very important for the future generation. That is the one sign I'm very uh, excited for and uh, I, I'm glad that we have that impact for the future generation. And uh, uh, ju- yes, as just I mentioned, that it's just uh, a, a very beginning and it's just still a small amount, but we do see the strong needs every day. So we're still looking forward to that. Yeah, and I, I love that example. And and that's that's really one of the, 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 the t- examples like this are one of the things that made me excited about the Filecoin world initially was when I first joined and, and still still make me excited. 
uh, it's just this idea of being able to preserve kind of the, you know, the, the, the other side of history, right? Like the, the, the part of history yeah. that you're not taught in school essentially. Right. Um, and cause you know, as we know, like the winners are the ones who create, you know, who write history, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, or the yeah. ones who write this, the, write the textbooks and you know, that what that gets taught in school and, and the losers usually don't get their stories, their side of the story told. Right. And at least there's a way now there's a way that we can, you know, help preserve some of these things uh, in, 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 in the wake of, or in the face of, of censorship and, and other types, other attempts to sort of minimize some of these, um, you know, the other side of the story essentially. So, uh, I really like that. That's a really great example. Um, I, I guess one, one final question for you here uh, would be, um, I feel like with, with this, this, the, the, the I feel like the, the main hurdle to like really adoption, uh, of this types of these types of content authentication systems are going to be, it's going to really be with the end user and the consumers, but there needs to be a level of awareness amongst the the consumer. I think to be to be like looking for this, right? So like when you see a a, a piece of content on the internet and it's like, oh, that's that's really salacious, right? Uh, it's like okay, like I need to double check and just make sure is this real or not, right? Like that should be just an yeah. instinctively you know, like the same way you look at you know on, when you're going to a website and it's it says like oh, okay do I have the little like you know secure like little lock icon yeah, right? yeah, yeah. indicate that it's secure right so that's something that that people are going to need to be kind of uh, just trained to do in some capacity like okay when you see some sort of content like that looks salacious it looks like it's just double check make sure that it's before you make any decisions based on this content right just like double check make sure it's real right. Um, yeah. maybe as just an example, like, I mean, in the U S like people right now, as we're recording this, everyone's sort of freaking out about the president's health. Right. And like, there's these videos and things <laughs> and like and people have been like, you know, anyway, it's a whole, I don't want to wade into that too much, but it, but it's an interesting example because like people are saying like, oh, they, like these videos are all doctored and you know, they're all, they're all fake and they're taken out of context and all these kind of things. And, um, it does, and it's, and it turns out a lot of these videos were maybe more real than people realized, but but I think it's a good example of of uh, people are going to kind of see what they want to see, right? It's like one side sees like, oh, like the, this president, he's too old, he can't govern. The other side says, oh, he's just he's doing fine, it's, it's not a problem. Like you guys are just overreacting, right? And um, there's or, or like, oh, you guys are just making fake videos and trying to scare people, whatever. Uh, but having like some kind of, of of central, you know, some sort of like objective truth of like, okay, is this, is this, did this video like actually happen? Is this actually, is this a real thing? Is this taken off context? Is this just fake altogether? Um, having a system like this is becomes important, but I think people have to, um, begin to, um, just internalize that like, Hey, we need to look for these, like we need to check to make sure something is real before we start freaking out about it. Right. And I think, I, I think that like the, like, like the community notes on X, has done like a, a reasonably good job of kind of preparing people for that, right? Where yeah, I feel like it's probably done as good of a job as you can do uh, as far as, you know, like po somebody posts something uh, that is like a doctored video and then people, like the community notes come in and they, they write like, hey, this video is actually doctored. This didn't actually happen this way. Or somebody posts a video from like 10 years ago and they're like, oh my gosh, look at this terrible thing that's happening. And, uh, the community notes comes in and says, no, actually this, ha this is, this video happened 10 years ago. This isn't actually like current, uh, it's taken out of context. Um, so I feel like the community notes is kind of helping people get to that. We're like, okay, like anybody can just post any random thing online and, uh, you need to be just judicious and think twice before you, you know, make some crazy decision or have some crazy reaction because you saw a piece of content on the internet. Um, but we'd just love to get your thoughts on how, um, like how does the, the end user, uh, behavior need to kind of adapt in this world of, uh, of, of like, you know, in, in this world of just like, we're going to have like just ubiquitous, like just content everywhere that may or may not be real. And we don't really know. Right. Yeah. Actually, you just gave a very good example on, uh, on Twitter, like on X. Uh, that's why I, I mean, that is a decentralized community, social media. So when people, People is already aware the the problem and they very have very a lot of concerns. So everything coming out, people start to like uh have a kind of question: is that real or not real? And uh, a lot of people coming here and trying to verify the information. But you know the verification is actually cause a lot of efforts 
So that's why we want to let people to verify that very easily. So uh, if numbers button is alongside every piece of content you see online, you will rely on the information to make informed decision, determine will whether or not to trust an article and decide whether or not to buy a product online. So I already see that the user behavior is a starting change. Like people is starting to get used to kind of verify or authenticate the content they care about. I'm not saying, you know, every social media piece of content, you have to check the source. There's a lot of like bunch of uh, entertainment information. You don't need like, kind of like check that every day it's cost yeah, too much uh, then make but, sure that cat picture is uh, authenticated yeah, and real right yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah so i i am saying that some of content you care about like we won't let you can verify that easily just like we when you go to a supermarket you will know like oh i want to buy this organic food or i want to buy this like uh, whole food brand food and i can check how it journey uh, not generate how it produced and how it, you know, to go to your hand. So we already got this kind of like a uh, customer behavior. We want to check everything I intact. It's good for me, but usually sometimes I also drink uh, zero Coke. I don't care. Or I also like have street food. I don't care. But uh, the digital content is also for our mental food. So verify the source of digital content should be easy as easy as verifying the source of food in the supermarket. So I uh, I would say we already see the shifting, but it's just in the moment of the shifting. So definitely we still have to like, produce some educational information like what we did right now, but also we also want to like, uh, you know, kind of ask the news media partners and the creators take action right now trying to register your uh, work and uh, have all this provenance uh, established so in the future i would say like um i see a you know report saying that after maybe like uh, i mean by 2026 maybe 90 percent of digital content was syndicated or like even like you know when the JNI tool could like kind of produce the count the amount of the content in one year like actually took you know traditional creators like five years to achieve that amount. So how did you stand up in that you know Gen AI content and how did you in in kind of have more engagement with your audience? I will say people in the future will more appreciate, you know, human creativity in the work. So how did you stand out from there? You have to take action right now and uh, how kind of this, uh, declare how did you do that? How did you process and how did you kind of contribute or, or generate your content and to, you know, show to your audience, either news media partner or your creators. And uh, definitely in the future, people the, the user will tend to go to high quality and trust platform to consume high quality information, and then you got you know more engagement and more value of your content. So it's a like a healthy ecosystem. Uh, but you know we all in the middle of the transition, so we need everybody to join together. Not only for us, we as a tech partner, we we always trying to help like how we can more empower creators or news media. But also, I, I would say you cannot just sit there and uh, say, okay, I, I, I don't have it right now. I just see if, you know, one day they really care and I adopt that. I mean, you know, the trend is work together. So I will also encourage everybody in this, you know, creator economic tech action as well. And so we can move to, towards to more healthy, worthy, and trustworthy like ecosystem. Yeah. yeah, those are some great points there, and I, and I think the, the the question of of like or you know or what was like the role of the creator in the in this generate this world of just like generative AI content everywhere, where like ninety percent of the content that we see is going to be AI generated and. And people are people. People kind of freak out about like, oh, we're going to be, you know, like journalists and artists. We're all going to be taken over, and like, it's just going to be AI that's writing everything, and AI run newsrooms, and AI run, you know, AI creating music and all these things, and AI creating art or whatever. But it, I think, 
Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of that. But I, I do think that a lot of what makes art art and what makes creativity creativity is just the fact that a human like actually did that, right? It's less, it's less yeah. of like, uh, you know, you know, it, like when I listen to like, uh, you know, like, uh, like Beethoven or something, it's, it, it's, it's, it, this would be, it would, the, it, it's impressive because like, wow, a human being like actually created this, like that, that's like, what's, that's, what's incre- that's, what's, uh, really incredible about it. It's not yeah. just like, oh, a machine just like created this thing. Like, okay. It'd be like, it'd be like watching the like, robots play basketball or something. Like, would that be interesting? Like, no, not really. Like, I, like, <laughs> like it's basically like, it's fun watching like sports because like, wow, like a human being actually ran, you know, a four minute mile or whatever, like did this like, incredible thing. It wouldn't be fun watching robots run in a race. Like that would be, you know, so I, I think we're going to be, I, I think we might actually come to the point where we're like, we start appreciating like human creativity more and and then, you know, really like, and hopefully like using tools like what you've built here, we can begin kind of like incentivizing and, and compensating this type of uh, activity better, right? And, and promoting this kind of stuff. So where it's like, yeah, there's going to be all this kind of like, uh, you know, this kind of junky, like garbagey, like generative AI stuff out there. That's fine for general things. But yeah. for like the real creative stuff that a machine just could never do that only a human being could do. Like we really need to find a way to like incentivize that type of, of, of content and the, and the people that are making that type of content. Right. So, um, so anyway, so I guess that's sort of my, my, like, I don't know, like my little rant on that subject or whatever, but, <laughs> but, uh, but, but it's really cool. Like, you know, seeing there, we have, now that we have tools like what you're building that, that will really help to authenticate and, uh, kind of, I guess, weed out bad stuff, but also promote the good stuff. Uh, I, mean, I think we're going to, these things are going to be very important and imperative in, in the years to come for the, for the reasons uh, you've mentioned. Um, well, anyway, I'll give you the last word here. Um, you know, anything that we should be looking, I mean, obviously we've got six months left in the year. It's a big election year around the world. Uh, like, what are you guys excited about? What are you working on? What should we expect to see out of numbers protocol over the next uh, six months or so? Yeah, we uh, kind of uh, we start like looking partners in the state that's because U.S. presidential election is coming soon. So we also still like trying to lock down the uh, partner if they want to provide and try this new technology and provide more trustworthy information to their audience. We definitely want to partner with them and to have you know some campaign in the U.S. presidential election. And also we are trying to. Uh, we also trying to improve our product, uh, the uh, the the display tool for the partners. We trying to empower our uh, creators and the partners more. So we kind of uh, add on more um, uh, function that we can collect the audience insights. I mean their audience insights, so we can provide more information for them to how they like to engage their audience. So that is also in our uh, product pipeline, and we. Also seeking for you know partners who willing to try this and uh, or like content creators or platform. I mean, we don't actually view creators as customer. We want to be partner with them and really build a tool that we can help them and either like you know helping them to escape from you know big tech. And they own their content and they can monetize their content and they can monetize their audience because audience is there currently. They, you know, the social media platform monetize their audience because everything is on centralized platform. So we are trying to help uh, uh, creators and trying to give them more power. And we have some beta will be launched. I will say maybe Q3. And we will come for everybody, you, you know, if they are interested in a solution, just, you know, check our website and uh, like maybe sign up for the newsletter. If we have this beta out, we can, you know, invite people to try and to collect and improve all together. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So we'll include links to uh, your website and your newsletter and everything in the show notes. Uh, and um, yeah, well, I guess if folks want to find you, connect with you personally, what's the easiest place to find you uh on linkedin linkedin okay perfect yeah um oh cool well, well thank oh. you so much vera for your th- oh <laughs> sorry sorry sorry, sorry. sorry I go just, ahead you uh, get the last word yeah 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 i just recall a, a things that i also want to share 
uh, we actually initiate a alliance. It's called the ethic. Uh, it's called the Creative Origins, and that is Ethical AI Alliance. We try. We want to assemble a team from tech partner, regulator, creators, every part. You know, everyone in this industry to brainstorm it together. Like how we could have a framework if in the future we want to deploy the AI in more ethical way, and how we could you know, have this framework to influence regulator. I mean, regulator also take action on AI as well. They also say we have, we need to have more responsible AI, blah, blah, blah. But definitely they will more or less influenced by the corporate, the big company. So we are kind of assemble a, like a decentralized alliance and every discussion will be open on GitBook on, on its own website. And we're trying to get to, you know, pick everybody's friend and to friend you know, the framework uh, for the ethical AI. And we want to balance out the power from this kind of big tech and we can improve something that really means like really help the creator and help this ecosystem in more healthy way. So welcome everybody to join this Ethical AI Alliance. I will share the link with you later as well. So currently it's just uh, in the very beginning process. Uh, we already have founding member and uh, still collecting you know, interest globally. <laughs> yeah, also very welcome for, uh, for the, you know, Pro Lab to join us. Yeah. That's another thing we are doing this this year. Amazing. No, that sounds really important. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Uh, well, Vera, really appreciate your time today. I uh, appreciate you coming on the show. It's great to hear about what you're, you're building, very inspiring work you're doing. So uh, best of luck. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you so much, Aaron. Thank you for having us. Just enjoy Amazing. the show. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching and listening. And uh, we'll see you next time.